go live. We're doing live. It's live. <laughs> Yay. We're live. Hello, everyone. Hello again. Hello. It's, it's Thursday, and it's 8 o'clock. That means NGS Live. <laughs> what? Oh. My I need ear. to mute that. That was weird. I didn't. I didn't mute the YouTube thing because I have up to see the chat. So I was hearing what we were saying like five seconds behind that. Oh, that's gotta be annoying. Um, <laughs> it was uh, trippy. So I asked, "What <laughs> model year is my four fifty eight? It's a twenty ten first year. There you go. And then I saw uh, John Ziki asked, "How is Megan Ash? Meg is fine. Ash is fine. Ash had his." Uh, doctor's appointment this morning. It was um, technically supposed to be a two-week uh, appointment, but you know it was like two and three quarters weeks, I guess. So Normal parents, you two? No, we were supposed to go on Tuesday, and they bumped it because um, the the doc was I don't know busy or something. But anyway, um, so Ash was good. Uh, doctor gave him a good bill of health. He uh, is um, so he was born at seven pounds four ounces. Mo, no barking. It's because Meg's outside or something. Someone's outside and the dog's like barking. Um, <laughs> and the the uh, today he was at eight four, so he's gained a pound. So that's good. So anyway. is that normal? Yeah, yeah. So like they he initially lost uh, a little bit of weight because like they uh, babies always lose some. Wait, uh, I'm like, I gotta text Meg and tell her to like tell the dog and get the dog. Mo, come here. <laughs> Good lord, <laughs> he is bad. Uh, doing live stuff. Hello, John. Hello. I am looking slick and sporty, Ricky. Thank you. You hitting on me? No, I'm just kidding. Staying man. Hello. <laughs> it's the usual crew. Sorry if you can hear my dog barking or barking, whining in the background. He is a pathetic, pathetic dog. He, you know, he really is. He is pretty pathetic. So, I don't know. It takes him a while to like get over the fact that, like, oh my god, people left me here at the house alone. <gasps> oh, I have to I'm dog. Gonna... <laughs> I have to dog for a little while. <laughs> Tragedy. <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah. Drinking again, yes. Right. This is uh, the Victory Lap glass. This was a gift um, by the Weinbergers. So, anyway. Who's Luigi? Where is Luigi? Who's Luigi? Yeah, we don't. I mean, Gabe wore the Luigi monkey uh, suit frequently. I haven't, I haven't seen Gabe in quite a while. And you probably won't. He moved to Boston. Do what now? He moved to Boston. Huh. So okay. He's no longer well. He is in the process of moving to Boston. So, I saw him. Uh, was it Friday? I think Friday of last week was like one of his last days here in Austin. And he swung by and said hi and stuff. But he's gonna be on the tour of Colorado. Oh, there you go. Tour of Colorado. Perfect transition. Tour of Colorado. Yes. Tour of Colorado. We need three more people to sign up. Three spots left in the tour of Colorado. Three. That's it. One, and two. Three. It's that easy. Three spots left. I lost my cam guy. Yeah. John Becker. Yo. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no Gabe. Mo wants his treats. Mo wants human attention. He is pathetic. He is pathetic. I will uh, never not agree with you on that one. Yeah, I could try and get him up here. Mo, Mo. Come here. Yeah, he can't he listen to me. It's like, no. I'm going to sit here at the front door and whine because that's way more effective <laughs> than like, I love the fact that like Meg leaves. And so he whines at the door, even though I'm still here. It's like, I guess I'm not <laughs> worthy, you know, like he, he would rather hang out with Meg than you. Honestly. Although it's possible. I think I saw the neighbor's dog out in the front yard. So maybe he sees Bella, his, his sweet uh, girlfriend. <laughs> So, what happens if you do not book the three spots for Colorado? Um, I lose money. That's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> We're still doing it. Like it's. Yeah. I already put. I put like, I don't know, thirty, forty thousand dollars down on this. Uh, 
So, you know, like, I'm just recovering costs at this point. Um, obviously, given the fact it's been this hard to get the slots filled, probably not going to do this again. Uh, <laughs> I, Which I said, is sad because these things are so much fun. Yeah, but they're just so much Oh, Baron Riddle's here? I missed that. Baron, where are you? There you are. Hey, haven't talked to you in a while. I see Tim's there. Of course, Tim's there. Um, Tim's always there. Yeah. Is well, there like a keep constant... in the shadows. Can you hear Mo in the background? Like, do I need to go downstairs? Yeah, we can. Okay, I'm going to go downstairs. I can. And like, I don't know, do something. Mo! Headlock him in his submission. Uh, he's just being terrible. So how are is everybody doing now that I have to oh. entertain you all by myself? Uh, Sassy Boy, the uh, you can go to our website and it's up there. I'm not sure off the top of my head how much it is. I should probably know this as somebody who, uh, you know, owns part of the company. But I don't know it off the top of my head. So let me see here. Da, 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 da. Where is it? Old reliable Tim. Well, I don't know that I would call him reliable, but he is always here. That is true. Yeah. All right. I don't know if he's gonna <laughs> shut up or not. So, uh. Sassy boy, it's anywhere from six thousand to about eighty seven hundred, depending on the options you pick. Uh, like if you come by yourself, but, it would be the lower end. If it was, uh, if you brought like a significant other or something like that, it, it could go up from there. Um, but oh, for the tour, <laughs> yes, six thousand yeah. is where it starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's. Um, I try to like price it as reasonable as possible. Like we're like. It's not meant to be a money maker for us. Like the vast majority of that cost is, like, actually, cost. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like of that six thousand dollars, if we get all the spots filled, I think I worked out that we'd make maybe a couple hundred bucks per person, maybe, and that's probably like unlikely. <laughs> so you know, we're not we're not trying to like fleece you guys and stuff. It's just trying to like, yeah. What happened to my aquarium it is gone. We sold it uh, a long time ago. It's been ago. a while, yeah. Yeah, we we sold it when we were doing the windows and siding and stuff on the house, and just said, you know what? Uh, yeah, if we don't sell the spots, we're gonna have a clearance sale. No, I, I'm not gonna lower the price of the tour because it's unfair to people who signed up ahead of time and paid full price. So that means like, I don't want people like showing up at the tour and be like. Hey, how much did you pay? Oh, I paid more than that? Fuck you. You know, I'm oh, sorry. F you. <laughs> you know, like, I don't want that. So it's like, no. There was, it was lower initially for the people that signed up really early, but then uh, June, the price went up, and that was, um, yeah, that's where it's at now. So anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, congrats on the new baby. I'm holding my 11 week old son, giving him his bottle while chatting. Well, that's awesome. Thank and congrats to you as well, sir. Uh, it has been an interesting, interesting uh, thing. What if my significant other is hot? Do I get a deduction? No, but hey, <laughs> I know you're. I know you, James. I know who your significant other is. Yes, she's hot, but no, you don't get a deduction. You pay full price. <laughs> <laughs> if only. Yeah. If it was like that easy. Hey, actually, if you could bring, if you could get other people to sign up, then maybe we can work something out. Um, yeah, we had kind of talked about doing a drive to, like, North Carolina or somewhere on the East Coast, but that never really materialized. It's it's so much work. These these tours are insane amounts of work and super high risk, like, you know, because you have to front the money. And so, you know, that's the problem with this one is I fronted all this money and, you know, we're just hoping people sign up, so. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see what else we got. Sorry, I've got like the screen over here with the, the commenting, and then over here is Adam. So I'm like, uh, uh. <laughs> that's why I just put it all on my center screen, right next to each other. Yeah, I mean, well, it's well, it's one screen. It's just a very large, beautiful screen. <laughs> is Adam going? Adam is going. Yes. I am. Yep. I will be there. So if y'all want to hang out with me, 
no idea why you would want to do that, but if you do, I will be there. Ah, uh, yes, tires. Oh, crap. I got to order tires. Uh, yeah. For Thanks for a reminder. 458 four, five, eight tires were a teensy bit low. It was close to the wear bars, like too close for comfort. Yeah. Uh, great to see you and Steve Perlman on the stream tonight. Steve Perlman. I have to Google that guy. I don't know who that is. I should start our own Top Gear. Uh, I mean, other people. The thing is, everyone's tried to copy Top Gear. Like, you got to come up with something different. Because the problem is, as soon as it's like Top Gear, everyone compares it to Top Gear. So that's yeah. Steve Perlman. I guess I could see it. I don't have the. Or he doesn't have the mustache, though. So. Are you guys making enough money to pay Adam yet? Mm, no. Uh, we didn't even make enough money. I am still working for free. <laughs> yeah. Just, just to let you guys know, we didn't even make enough money to pay me this one. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's been rough. Uh, the summer has been rough because uh, it just people aren't buying as much. What's really killing us is like nothing's in stock. Uh, I've had a lot of canceled orders because people found out that it's going to take like a month or two or three or four to get their stuff. And they're like, oh, I can't wait that long. And then give me a refund. So, <laughs> that's, yeah, it's been frustrating. But, I mean, it is what it is. Um, so we're the kicker is, is that they're out of stock everywhere. Yeah, that, that was... Uh, there's only so many suppliers out there. Right, that, that was the part I didn't understand, is people were like, oh, I'm, you know, I can't wait four months. Right? Well, well, you're going to wait four months either way, so if you cancel this order, you've lost your spot in line, so now it's going to take yeah. four months later. You know, I mean, I guess you could wait a year or two or three, and maybe everyone catches up, and then you can buy something and have it come in in a month. But, um, yeah. So, what anyway. What can you do? Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. We've had uh, we've had some tough times with uh, YouTube. It has not been friendly. They they obviously are not ranking our videos very highly right now because we uh, kind of haven't been blowing anything up or catching anything on fire or getting arrested or anything that's like that. So um, yeah, therein lies the problem, Ricky. Well, that, that that's <laughs> a, that's huge a huge component of it, right? So like we don't look at views as like, oh, we get views and therefore we get ad money. We look at, hey, we get views that gets more people to our website, which gets more people to buy stuff. So that's kind of like our business equation as opposed to most, you know, YouTubers are like, I want views because that means I get ad money. But I don't, I don't really care about the ad money. Like the ad money is insignificant compared to the money we make off selling stuff. So yeah, everything is out of stock. It, it's just, sucks no uh yeah i mean well we're concerned too obviously yeah. like you know uh this is our livelihood and it's you know it's rough right now but you know hey it's always uh everything's always up and down like when you start your own company it's it's not going to be like smooth sailing like oh everything's great like there's gonna be some rough times it's gonna go yeah. good so some traders down and down voted <laughs> damn you traders the dunking booths are awesome. I would totally do a dunking booth. Yeah, we could. I don't James know. suggested it. We put me in a dunking booth. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we were gonna have you do a live with us, James. We should do that still, one of these days. Uh, did you get those valves clean? Yes, everything's clean. The engine's back together. Uh, it's running. The car good. runs. Yep. Did not catch on fire. Did not catch on fire. Uh, how is Gate 6? Is that making any money right now? No, it's not yet. Um, it's close. Uh, we have, I believe we have kits on the shelf for the 430s and 360s ready to go. Um, at least a couple of them. Uh, we're still... Yeah, not all. We don't have all 50 of them or whatever it was, but we do have some on the shelf. So. Yeah, uh, so that's um, looking positive. Uh, and then the 5 and 9 stuff, we're kind of finishing up some of the manufacturing and prototyping on that. Um, so that should be, uh, I mean, the manufacturing is going to take two or three months. So we're still two or three months out on the 599s. Um, it's just, it's just, everything's slow. Everything's slow. So, um, no, it's not, a, it's not a feel bad or feel sad thing. Like this is like, this is the reality of doing business, right? Like the, you know, like it doesn't always go perfectly. Like it's not, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think of a way to explain it. Like, you know, the problem is like. On the world of YouTube, 
everyone edits everything in a way that always looks like everything is great and glamorous and perfect and whatever, right? And it's not. Behind the scenes, it's like <laughs> lots of crap going wrong, you know, all sorts of stuff. So, yeah. oh man, your dad passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, geez. I just hear. That's like What's a up, way bigger like problem than our crappy little business problems. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey Dan, for the first Ferrari purchase, looking into possibly a 360, would you su suggest using a Ferrari dealership for PPI or independent shop? I would suggest using anyone that can do a good PPI, wherever you can find it. If you can find a good independent, I would prefer that. If you can do a dealership, that's cool too. Real money, not Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is he? Who is he? Mousetrap, I think, is who he's talking about. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's true. Yeah, where is Mousetrap? Usually he's like... Uh... We're going to have to like send a search party I know, to his right? house like, to make sure he's like, not like dead in the... Uh, yeah. Like, didn't die on the shit or like Honestly. Or crap or like Elvis did. <laughs> I'm a little worried for you, Mousetrap. I mean, you're going to hopefully see this later. and we're, We were thinking about you. <laughs> uh... 43 watching right now and only 20 thumbs up. I'm more like only 43 watching right now. Yeah, I know. Like, man. Normally so, we hover kind of around in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Unless people are watching Dan's car leak profusely on the garage floor that we had like 90 or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that, that wrenching live stuff was, uh, that was challenging. Let me say that. But it was fun though. I, I was me. stressed. I don't know if I want to do it again just because it was stressful. Because, like, that's that's three hours of doing, like, problem solving while people are watching and giving you shit and, like, having to think about what you're going to say and, and basically, be like, trying to put on a show and be entertaining. You know, it's like, that's a lot to, to well, carry. Well, yeah, but I don't think it would be nearly as bad if your car didn't have an unexpected leak out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, I think that's what... The majority of the stress was like I think if it was literally just an oil change, it would have been totally awesome. Because see, look, everybody loves it. They said it was awesome. Yeah, I don't know. The one thing I heard uh, someone say that I kind of thought was cool was someone said it's it's kind of like um, they were, they said they actually wrenched on a car while watching it slash listening to it just for the I banter and stuff. And I'm like that yeah. kind of makes sense. So it's like you know like oh you got the bros hanging out we're gonna go wrench in the car like. It's almost like you, yeah, exactly. You can't edit live. That's exactly the problem, right? Like, you screw up. And there's no going back. Oh, there he the is. Mouse trap is. Here. <laughs> there he oh. is. We were worried about you. We were genuinely concerned that something yeah, was man. wrong with you. Thought maybe like a moose killed you or something <laughs> up there in Canada. <laughs> the moose, eh? The moose is loose in the moose. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh, he's like, <laughs> gotta make up for it. <laughs> the moose is loose in the hoose. I've never I forgot heard that the A. Before. Forgot the A. <laughs> moose is loose in the hoose, eh? <laughs> Dude, have, oh, you, have you ever man. seen a, a moose up close? They're huge. Yeah, when I lived in Alaska. Oh yeah, you live in Alaska. That's right. They, where the dining hall was, when I would eat at the dining hall, there was a huge glass window around one side of it. And they would literally just stand there at the window with their nose on the window watching you eat. And like when they would breathe onto the glass, it would fog up oh my God. and everything. That's how close they were standing there. Like, you know, my sister lives in Anchorage and like she's got like every year little baby mooses that like are wandering around in their backyard and stuff like when the yeah. moms give birth. And Chris, like... It's a little scary because like you don't want to get near the babies. Like the mom. Will oh, as long as you don't get between the baby and the mom, you're yeah, fine. Yeah, the mom will kill you. I mean, like straight up kill you. Yeah, so, for sure. More than well, one is called meese. <laughs> I don't think that's right. Is it meese? I think it's moose. That doesn't sound right, but I don't know enough about moose to I, dispute it. So I'm just anyway, gonna let it go. Why are we talking about moose? <laughs> because the moose is loose in the moose, eh? I have Canadian YouTube, so Canadian monies. <laughs> <laughs> uh we're gonna try and do one with josh about every month or so like it's yeah. not gonna be 
every month like on the dot. Yeah, you know, part of that's we don't, around. we don't want to waste a lot of his time because you know he's got like a real company to run and that actually makes money. Yeah, one that actually makes <laughs> money. <laughs> so we don't want to take him away from him uh, his ability to make money. Um, and he's like already been so ridiculously generous helping us, you know. So it's you know I don't want to. Um, I mean he enjoyed it, but you know yeah. At the same time, it's like, hey, you know, I, I get it. You got to make some money. Um, yeah, you know, I'm double fisted inside. This was this is keep me awake, and this is put me back to sleep. So I'm trying to offset everything. Uh, Dude, the bottles, the Coke in a bottle is amazing. Yeah, but it's not the Mexican Coke. This is like the uh, it's, still still pretty good. And I actually don't even really like Coke, but it's like you know, it's a wee little bottle, so that's perfect because I just wanted some caffeine. How do you not like Coke? What is wrong with you? I don't drink soda. Like, it's hardly so hard to work. It's so hard to work with you sometimes. I don't drink soda. Oop, hiccup. That's, yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> the distributor videos were fascinating. Learned a lot about how they work. You know, that's one of those videos that, like... People are either going to love it or hate it. Yeah, like, when we were filming that, I, the whole time I'm thinking to myself, this is super cool and uh, really interesting and no one's gonna watch it. <laughs> like, it's funny, because when you're making videos, you have videos that you, you just know, like, oh man, this is really interesting. I love this stuff. No one's gonna watch it. Like, it's gonna do poorly on, on YouTube. And those videos, Josh even told me, he's like, hey, I wanna do these distributors. I know they won't do well, but um, you wanna do a video on it anyway? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So like, that's the thing is like, sometimes we do videos that we don't really care that we're gonna get low views because we we are interested like that's to us fascinating so you know anyway yeah. bolivian bolivian coke never uh, interesting um yeah uh when do we get to see the boat finished well it's not yet so you don't get to see it finished yet um but we're gonna put it in the water tomorrow <laughs> the boat's uh, not finished no, it's still got all the interior to go. Oh, the interior, yeah. Yeah, yeah everything else is done, but the inter interior is still crap. Um, <laughs> interesting enough, I had a dude offer to buy it today. Really? He didn't give me like a, a number yet, but he was like, hey, I'm interested in buying it. I'm like, give me a number. <laughs> we'll see what he says. I'm curious. Um, no updates on your 458. Uh, well, there's like... Uh, Five or six videos coming out in the form of eight. Like, yeah, so. In queue for yeah, it. Yeah, they're already but queued it, up. It, it's edited. running and it's running and driving and everything else. Yeah, yeah, it's it didn't blow yeah. up. The valves are clean. Those work great. Um, yeah. Change the exhaust. <laughs> yeah. So it's been, we spent a lot of time, like basically a full week on just working on the four of eight every day. 12, 12 hours, hours a day. day. Yeah. yeah. So it was a lot of work. Um, so let's, let's appreciate that Tim called my mustache a womb broom. Womb broom? <laughs> you're going to get me demonetized. I just want to point that awesome name out because I've never heard that before. I've never heard that either. A womb broom. <laughs> okay. Let's not go there, because that's that gets us into bad territory really quickly. I don't know what is this. Carrie texted. I know Carrie. Carrie texted both of us. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, he's drinking Miller Lite. <laughs> that's good, Carrie. Are you watching, Carrie? He must. Be, he probably can't type right now. That's, he might be watching the live and like yeah. working. So. That's a, that looks like his counter at home, though. Oh, is it? Well, I mean, he might be working from home. Could be. I don't know. Uh, yes. Which one use Crockett? Which one use Tubbs? I don't know. I didn't ever really watch Miami Vice, so. I'm going for more of a Baywatch type thing, like <laughs> David, like a fat David Hasselhoff. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. <laughs> the Huff. You, you, we'll call you the Huff instead of the Huff. <laughs> I should be offended by that, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait baron we are working on getting the svr race going again this year november 4th through 7th 
Assuming COVID does not cancel us, I might be able to score a few tickets for you. Might be the sweet this year. Baron, you are a god. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Every year I look forward to hearing that email or that phone call or text that you tell me about that. Yes, please. Please do not cancel COVID. Like COVID, don't screw this up. That I, I enjoyed that race more than going to F1. I'll just say that. Legit. It's more fun. Way more access. So, anyway. Uh, oh, look at this. New England Car Spine. Hey, how's it going? First time tuning in. Well, welcome. Welcome to the, to the live, which is basically a shit show. Um, but, yes, welcome. Uh, do test roses suck as driving cars? I mean, they are... They're a handful. Like, it takes effort. Like, you don't just like you don't just like jump in the test rows and be like, "I'm gonna go out for a drive." You're gonna be like, "I'm gonna go sweat and work hard, and I'm gonna enjoy the crap out of it." But, yeah. <laughs> now you've got Carrie's attention. What is the SVRA race? It's Sports Car Vintage Racing Association. So it, it's like they have old F1 cars, old Indy cars. They have like. Uh, old um, IROC or whatever that uh, some of those older series cars they have like like people that have taken street cars and turned them into race cars like all sorts of different divisions but what's so cool about it is it's like open it's you know you get access and then you just can wander the pits and walk up and talk to these people about these cars and yeah Can-Am um, all that all that cool stuff and like it's just I don't know. I like it. I really enjoy it just because you get to really see the cars and talk to people and the racing is pretty good. Um, like, don't get me wrong. F1's cool. It's like a, you know, it's like a carnival for F1, but like F1's just so packed and crazy, you know. Anyway. The I, saw somebody, I saw somebody ask about Le Mans. Yes, I am watching Le Mans this weekend. I will be doing oh, that. Here. How do we get a car entered? Uh, that's a great money. question. Lots of money. You start with a billion dollars and you end up with a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. I look like I should be in the Sopranos. Who would I be in the Sopranos? Hmm. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, I like I love the SVRA. Um, actually, my favorite racing at Coda is the Ferrari Challenge. Like it's just. Of course. I love it. It's. It's because you got like this mix of like professional grade drivers and complete amateurs, and they're all out at the same time, and so it's just like cars. The tryhards the try, the try are trying to prove themselves. Yeah, and it just goes terribly. It's great. It's absolutely great. Contract killer? What is contract? What? what? I think they're talking about for the Sopranos. Me? Oh, I can see that. I think maybe. I don't know. You like the dude that shows up in the middle of the night and. Puts a horse head in somebody's bed. Yeah, something like that. Is that from The Sopranos? Or that was no, no, uh, that was yeah. uh, Godfather. There's a cheap I rock on blocks in my neighborhood. We LS it and we're good to go cheap. It's not <laughs> a bad idea. Where at in your neighborhood? You own the whole neighborhood. So yeah, it's wait. Your car. Yeah, it's probably it's probably already <laughs> on your property. <laughs> He's like, that's you what I said. It's in my neighborhood. <laughs> Somebody, Dale, you think I should be in the Sopranos? Carrie, there's your Soprano guy oh, right there. Dude, they need like <laughs> Sopranos Redneck Edition. <laughs> like Indiana Hoosier Edition. There we go. It's not. It's not even Redneck. It's Hoosier. It's with it's, corn. <laughs> it's very distinct. <laughs> Would you ever go to Monterey Car Week? Absolutely. I went uh, a couple years ago. It is so much fun. Um, I did not go this year, obviously, because of my uh, kid's birth. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that kind of inter interfered. Um, probably going to go back next year. The, the trick is, so, like, here's where it's kind of weird. Like, going to Monterey Car Week as a car enthusiast, it's like going to the Super Bowl. As a business, it's questionable about us going to it from, like, a monetary perspective because – we don't make money going to Monterey Car Week. Like, we lose a lot of money because it's very expensive. And the videos, you know, 
I mean, unless we happen to catch a car, like explode or something like that, it's just not going to perform it well. And let's be real, we're, we're competing against like every other YouTuber on earth is also going to Monterey Car Week. So um, it's hard. But um, what would be fascinating is if like we had a cool project car or something that lined up that we could like unveil it at Monterey Car Week. That might be worthwhile, but you know, anyway. <laughs> Carrie's like, I did say my neighborhood. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Oh, I totally would do the Miata race series. That would be fun. I would, I would love to. I want to buy a Miata and race it at Harris Hill because they have a Miata series. That would so, be fun. And since I'm a member there, I'm already halfway there. Oh, Kiersey with Banana is posting pictures. Yeah, like, dude, I hate not being at Car Week and then going on me like social media and you just see all the cool crap and you're like, oh man, I want to be there. But, like I said, it's expensive. It is fun. It is fun going to Car Week. The 599 will be sold by this time next year. Too. Uh, it better be. Jeez. It should be driving within a month. A month. A yeah, month. cross your fingers. Come on, 599. <sighs> We're this close. This close. You know, you could have used a chemical to clean those valves in a 458. You pour it in the port. BG makes it. Well, we had the intake off. So, yeah. We didn't know they were that dirty until we got the intake off. Yeah. Like, it wasn't It wasn't intentional. It was like, the plan wasn't, hey, let's go clean the valves in the 458. It was, hey, let's take the intake manifold off and get it repainted. And then it was like, oh, we have to pull off the entire intake manifold. Okay. And then I was like, hey, maybe I should do the valve course too. And people said, yeah. And I was like, okay, great. And then we looked in the intakes and saw the valves, and they were terrible. Um, there you go. I love Tim, Carrie, and Stu. I think that Lopert, Richard, and Fred are snobs. Aw. That's They're actually, awesome, though. That's totally not true, actually. Um, so I'll admit, the first time I met Loper, couldn't stand the dude because he's just like 100 miles an hour, 24 7 never lets off the gas and i was like holy cow i could not spend time with this dude but loper is one of my favorite human beings right it is one of my favorite human beings yeah he's amazing yeah he is yeah monterey is something like a flaming porsche this time i mean you know <laughs> would you ever consider doing a project car reveal at sema yeah if maybe we big enough yeah yeah i mean <laughs> The, the catch is a lot of our projects aren't like flashy. Like we're not the ones going out and be like, "Hey, let's do a wide body and paint it purple and take the rear bumper cover off." Yeah, and drive around without bumper covers and crap. So like that's just not really our mo. Um, so I don't know. Like, I mean, I guess gated cars, the conversion cars, but like that's gonna be old news by that time. Like you know. So I don't know. Um, let's see. Who did the powder coating the 4 engine parts? Uh, Enigma Coatings here in the Austin area. They are awesome. Actually, I sh shoot, I shouldn't have said that. Dang it. I don't want people to start using them because then they get too busy. Like, Josh was already like, he's like, calls me up. He's like, hey, how backed up was Enigma when you dropped him off? I'm like, ah, oh, two to three weeks. And he's like, damn it, they're telling me four weeks. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Anyway, uh, might be cool to go to Barrett Jackson auction in February. Is that in um, uh, Phoenix? Because usually the spring Barrett Jackson one is in Phoenix, I think, right? I want to go to that one of these years because my parents live in Phoenix, so it's a good excuse to go to Phoenix and, you know, see some cool cars. So. My in laws live about an hour outside of Phoenix. Okay. So, like, double reason to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Scottsdale. Oh, Scott, yeah, Scottsdale, Phoenix, same thing. Well, I mean, the greater Phoenix area, or the, the valley, the Phoenix Valley. There you go. Uh, you guys have a great circle of car friends. Well done. Well, thank you. Yeah, we do have a good group of guys. Like, it's pretty cool. And, you know, like, they're, they're genuine good people. Like, it's not just car stuff. Like, they legit will, like, you know, help you out and stuff. So it's cool. Um which GT3 in specific are you asking about, Raccoon? Uh, have you resolved the issue with the powder coated headers that caught on fire? Um, nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, I don't want to go there. 
<laughs> it's just a sore spot. It makes me pissed <laughs> off thinking about it. So I'd rather not discuss it. It's just a, a loss of money. That's, you know, what can you do? <laughs> Uh, Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, don't. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm gonna, it's it's not a good look. Amelia <laughs> Island, that's another one I want to go, go to. That would be fun. Um, I mean, there's a ton of stuff. Look, there's so many things I want to do, but like, it's only a limited amount of time, limited, limited resources, you know. But, yeah. Um, let's see. Oh. I want to, uh, I'm 15 and go to trade school for business, which is good. Uh, I want to purchase a gym after I graduate and would like to own a 4 by the age of 22. Is it possible? Yeah, sure. It's possible. Anything is possible. It's not going to be easy. <laughs> You're going to have to bust your ass. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's possible. Um, how would you go around finding a car group to join in our local area? Well, I don't know your local area, so I don't really know. I would say in Austin, um, it's kind of been like, uh, like, I don't know, hard to, like, it's not intentional. Like, I, I don't know, we, I'm, I'm a part of a bunch of different car groups here in Austin. And so like, you go out, you meet some people, you talk to these people, Hey, do you know about so-and-so? We should go to his house and check out his car. Okay, let's do that. And next thing you know, you start meeting more and more people. And then like, I don't know, we, I mean, we formed our own group of people, like, you know, because we didn't like some of the groups. So we formed elite ATX. Or I should say Eric did and invited me to be a participant in that. Um, there's like sweet rides of Central Texas. So like in in this area, um, that's probably like the number one spot to find out like car stuff going on. So it's a Facebook group called Sweet Rides of Central Texas. And I think it's got like, I want to say it's got like thousands. Over, it's got over, I think almost 10,000 members now. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, and Sean, my buddy, runs that. And that's where I find out like, all the car events going on locally, pretty much. Um, finding a car group is easy. It's finding a car group with cool people that you actually want to hang out with. That's exactly. Cool. Yeah. Finding car groups easy. Yeah, exactly. But like, even like uh, for, for Ferrari stuff, joining the FCA. If you're a Porsche member, join the PCA. If you're a Lamborghini person, well, just, uh, I don't know, go rev your engine. <laughs> <laughs> Park in valet and rev couple times you'll find some other dudes <laughs> whoa i heard a lamborghini <laughs> raccoon this the latest version of the gt3 i like it i really really like the rear end the tail lights on it and then i also think that the way they mount the rear wing now is super cool i'm a huge fan of it oh stupid question are you required to tip bigger depending on the value of your car at valet especially if it was parked up front well if you park up front generally it's like implicit that you're going to tip bigger. So, but what I, I mean, so there's two scenarios. One is you go to a valet you've never parked in before. And if you like kind of, so like I always just do self park. Like I won't let my keys leave my possession because then they can like do things to your car and air spewler. Yeah, off. exactly. So like <laughs> I'll pull up and be like, I would like to park right there. And they say, okay, cool. And then I usually give them like, I don't know, 10, 20 bucks. Uh, depends on how much the valet is um, but we had for the longest time and it's really sad we had a valet guy that we were good friends with and um, we parked there every friday and saturday night like someone from our group would and so we didn't tip him as much because he just got constant business from us and he he actually joked he's like i like it when you guys come because then i don't have to worry about dumbass is trying to park up front he's like you guys just take it over and control it and it makes my life easier so anyway um yeah valet 20 30 bucks or so it's about right keep the keys um you guys get the engine out of 355 yet nope just started wrenching on it yesterday so it'll be that's why i made that post though today on the socials if you're not following us on socials follow us yeah but i wanted to let you all know that it did actually we have actually started it it is yep. Yep. coming apart it's no longer drivable and will not be that for months correct. <laughs> yeah yep see what fry would you love to test drive i don't know any of them <laughs> i like variety yeah <laughs> I mean, I would love to drive an F40 just to see if it's all the hype, but 
I, I suspect it's going to be like one of those like don't meet your heroes kind of thing. With how old it is, yeah, I would, I would expect that. I mean, like, it's like when I drove the Testarossa first first time I ever drove a Testarossa, it was like, you know, disappointingly slow. But my expectations were that, oh, it's not going to be that fast. So it actually kind of did make, like, my expectations fine. But, like, the experience of driving, just, like, how heavy the steering was, how, you know, like, it's just totally different. It was It was fun. It was really fun. I enjoyed it. So, um... Friendly advice, some better tools to make your task so much easier. Snap on sockets. No, no, that's not friendly advice. That's annoying advice because it costs a lot more money. <laughs> and on top of that, <laughs> snap on tools are not the greatest tools in the world. I hate the whole snap on thing. It's like, why? I was a professional mechanic on airplanes for years. That's not, I'm not saying you shouldn't have the right tools for a job, but right. paying more for a tool just because of some brand name is stupid. Like, if, yeah. if I can go buy a Harbor Freight piece of shit tool for like three dollars instead of like thirty dollars for a snap-on and it gets the job done yeah um, but anyway moving on yeah uh so the adam shirts i'm assuming you're talking about the if uh, owning or work if owning was a porsche was easy everybody would do it uh we cannot put that up because it has porsche in it and we were told that it's a copyright infringement yeah unfortunately <sighs> yes oh good night james say hi to melissa <laughs> Good night, James. Oh, yep. Uh, so. let's see. You hear Mo? Yeah, he was barking. He wanted to get let in. He was out there. Um, let's see. Do you think that possibly get some new cars may help the views of the channel? New cars, like, well, I mean, look, like, here's here's the thing. Um, a lot of the channels go through cars very rapidly, and you'll see them buying and selling cars constantly they don't ever really own the cars like and i'm not saying that like in a facetious or sh like put down kind of way i mean it's not their car like it's it's a prop for their show right like my 458 is my 458 like i love that car it's my car i want to do stuff with it i'm not buying that car because i want to make videos about you know like to get views right i bought that car because i want that car now, like, the 355 is a project car. That car exists for the point of getting views for our channel, right? So it's a different, like, that's more uh, analogous to what a lot of these channels do. Now, I think it was almost like a, um, it was almost like a, um, what do you call it? Like a, a, a battle or a war to, like, keep upping the crazy cars that these channels would get. Right, so like they were constantly like every week, oh, we got another car, we got another car, uh, and, and like it just, to me, just like, yeah, it gets views, but it's just not reality. Like this show's not like our channel's not about that. Like no one I know, well, I shouldn't say that. There are some wealthy people I know who do get new cars like every other week, but no one in normal reality goes out and buys a new car every week. Maybe a couple times a year for some of us enthusiasts because we're stupid like that. That's just like, and uh, the three five five is also one that we got because a lot of people asked for it, and when that opportunity presented itself, we jumped all over. That's why we drove eighteen hours well, and, each and the, way to go pick it up. And then the the other factor of that is we just don't simply have the resources to do that. Like we don't have the money, so we can't just go out and buy fifteen cars. I mean, I, I could go take out like you know crazy loans and stuff, but I'm like it's no, it's I'm. I'm not, you know, I'm not stupid, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, yeah, exactly. We, we I, oh, I appreciate that you appreciate the fact that we work on cars that we actually own. Yeah, like that's the thing is like we really these are cars. Like I think we're trying to present what it's actually like. Like when I say this channel is about the supercar ownership experience, I mean that it's like this is what it's like to actually own this car. It's not. Here's a car. Oh, and, and go look over here. Here's another car. And uh, next week, here's another car. And we're going to put this stupid notification out that no one actually wants because it looks crazy. Oh, and we get views. You know, like, that's that's not us. Like, we're not putting on, like, the, you know, like, the clown nose and, like, putting on a song and <laughs> dance and, like, oh, hey, come look at our cars. That's not us. Although you guys should see the outfit that I bought for a video with the boat. I'm not opposed to like props. Props are great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I what like... is the price point? Somebody said to ask about the price point of the Z06 on the 
360, 430 market. Did they say what the price point is on the Z06? I haven't seen the price point yet. I think it's going to be... Wasn't uh, the C7Z06 like over one, 100? Oh, yeah. It was it'll, like it'll 110 over, or it'll, something? It'll be over 100. I think I thought it was supposed to be like closer to like 150 or something, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, will that impact the F430, 360, 48 market? No, I don't think so. Just like the, the C8, I don't think really impacts the market enough. Um, the, there's, there's Yes, there's some people who might buy a C8, but I don't think there's too many people that say, I'm buying a C8 instead of a Ferrari. Um, in fact, the, hilariously, I know Ferrari owners who said, I'm buying a C8 because I'm going to go beat the shit out of it and I don't care about it. <laughs> So, because they're like, hey, a hundred grand and I can beat the crap out of it. And, you know, so uh, I don't think it's, yeah. You should get Josh to do car roast slash reviews. That would be awesome. I mean, he does like all the time, right? That's, <laughs> every time car he's. Car roasts. I mean, it's pretty <laughs> yeah. much like every time he's on the channel, he's like, here's everything you're doing wrong, dumbasses. I guess he's every roasting. Every time he sees my Porsche, he roasts it. True story. Um,. <laughs> I'm watching a channel that has three million subscribers. Shows videos from four years ago when I had like two, when I had two cars, four years, and sixty thousand subscribers. Give Dan and Adam time. Yeah, you know, like, and again, like our goal isn't to become the biggest channel on earth. Like that's we never will be. We, I, I, hundred. But we're not opposed to it. No, I mean, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna be like, oh no, please don't. You know, like, no, but like, because of the nature of our channel, we're not, like, we're not intentionally getting the crazy stuff we don't go out and get police to chase us we don't blow up cars we don't destroy things we don't do like stupid modifications that are completely pointless but look outrageous like we're we doing... don't take rear bumpers off our car yeah we don't drive around with no bumpers we don't put uh, an exoskeleton on my car no offense like it's like look if that floats your boat cool that's... And I'm not knocking them. Right, Clearly, no, no. they're doing something right. Hey, they're making all way more money than we are. So, all those hey. people and all those channels are doing what they want to do, and that's great. And people clearly want to watch it, and that's great for them too. And it's entertaining, but it's entertainment. Like that's yeah. not us. We're not necessarily meant to be. Like our goal is not entertainment. Our goal is like providing experiential resources and data. You know, trying to get you to buy parts from us, uh, buy services from us, you know, uh, trying to show you what it's like to really own these cars and like teach people like, here's what you can expect when you own these cars. Here's things that happen. Here's how much money it costs us. Like I've been super transparent about, you know, how much these cars have cost me over and over and over. I showed you like every last dollar I've spent on these cars because that like, those were the questions I had when I bought my Ferrari. And that's why, when I got the channel going, I wanted to expose that data because I could not find that data anywhere. Like I didn't know how to change the oil in the car because there were no videos about changing oil in the car. I didn't know how much money insurance was going to cost me because there was no videos on that. I didn't know how much money it was going to cost to keep it up every year. All I knew was like a bunch of people said a bunch of random things and like the ranges were huge. You know, someone's like, oh, I only spend $2,000 a year. And someone's like, I spend $30,000 a year. And it's just, you know. <laughs> So I wanted to say, this is what my experience has been like. This is what you can expect, if that makes sense. Um, not too many uh, Ferrari owners would dare work on their own cars. Uh, and then it's quite, no, actually, it's not true. So it's like, there are quite a few that do. They're just generally the older Ferraris. It's not like, I would say the, the closer to current you are on the Ferrari, the less likely someone is to work on it. Because number one, you have a warranty. And number two, they get more complicated and expensive and stuff. So anyway, um, there's channels that do have 1 million plus that don't do any crazy stuff. There absolutely are, sure. Um, you know, also a lot of those channels have been around a lot longer than us. Like I've only been doing this for five years. So, um, you know, and there's actually also like a weird thing about YouTube. Like if you go look at all these big channels there's always this one inflection point like something happens some video goes viral and then their channel explodes from that point and it just stays that way and i i've specifically seen it happen on like three or four channels that i watch not really regularly because i don't really watch youtube regularly but that i you know am aware of and like i can point out the exact video that happened and it changes the entire channel and from that point on they're big right 
we just haven't had that happen yet. We've had some videos go good, but they're not like, they're not the right ones. Like, you know, having my uh, live PD video was great. We got a lot of views, got new subscribers, but it wasn't really in line with the, the channel. So what happened is people would watch it, subscribe, think, oh, this is cool, but then my videos would be different than that content, right? So, you know, ah, anyway. Um, Billy, you're the exact kind of person we're trying to help out. Uh, what does it say? As someone who is searching and looking to own his first exotic car, this channel has given me the hope that I could actually live with it and work on it myself. Exactly. Yes. You are our target demographic. Yep. <laughs> like, straight up. That's exactly the person who I want watching this channel. Yeah. 100%. Any advice on finding a 355 GTS outside of normal places like Auto Trader, eBay, Motors, Ferrari, Market Lair? I know somebody who's got a 355 in a garage right now getting a major done to it that would be for <laughs> sale when it's done. So depending on the timeline that you're looking to buy that car, I might know a guy. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, <laughs> it's hard. It's really hard to find cars, especially this year. Um, it was easier last year. and um, No, I mean, I don't – it's like you always seem to stumble on them. Uh, you could – I don't know. Some sometimes some dealerships don't publish on like the major platforms like Auto Trader and stuff, but it's tricky. So like you could like bang you know bang around and check a bunch of dealerships. Um, that's one way to do it. But I mean, it's hard. It's hard to find a good car right now. Uh, what about regular posts? Does that help? Uh, I mean, are you talking about like videos? Like we do three a week. Um, I've done more than that and it does help sometimes, but like it's hard to maintain high quality and do lots of content. Um, and then also uh, the problem is DIY content's really expensive and also uh, very time consuming. So like to produce one DIY video takes a very large amount of time. So you've got the actual DIY work, which, you know, like I said, uh, the 458, we just spent an entire week on the car. Right? 12 hours a day. 12 hours a day for a week straight. And we got like four or five videos out of that. So, I mean, think about that. A week of work to get four or five videos. And then that doesn't include actually editing the video. So then I have to sit there and edit the videos. And then I would say for every one hour you see of a video, it's probably at least three hours, maybe four of editing, I would say. Uh, especially for DIY, DIY takes a lot longer to edit. So, um, yeah, that's, you know, do the math and it gets like difficult, you know, like time becomes the enemy <laughs> and somewhere yeah. in the, somewhere in there, I got to have to like spend time with my wife and kid. Yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy. Yeah. It's a crazy amount of work. Um, plus add in the fact that we're trying to run a, you know, uh, retail sales, we're doing consultation calls, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, a ton of work it is ridiculous but it's fine i like you know i over and over said i would not trade this to go back to my old job even though it's way harder it's just so much more fun <laughs> yeah. um oh yeah yeah tim's story is great because tim had been looking for cars he cut he was calling me a couple times and then he calls me up and he's like Hey, I found this 348 and blah blah blah. And I think it was like forty something thousand dollars. And he's like, Do you think I should buy it? And Meg overheard that and Meg was downstairs and Meg's like, F yeah, buy it too. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. <coughs> uh, yeah. What She's would you consider a high mileage for 430 at the moment? Uh Dan? Uh, I mean Define high mileage. I mean, I would buy a 430 with lots of miles. Um, I mean, like the market considers, I would say 30,000 to be kind of like high miles, but I think 30,000 is nothing. Um, I would say like 60,000 starts to get kind of high. 75,000, you start to worry about some of the wear in the interior. So like that starts to become a problem, but like the car itself can run way past 100, no problem especially the engine. The engine can go you know, 200,000 without needing anything other than oil changes. 
Um, so forty thousand miles is nothing. Yeah, forty. I mean, cars. you know, it's like you just got to think about what wears out over these durations of time on the cars. So like you know, clutch. Obviously, what about the uh, wheel bearings, uh, ball joints, uh, CV boots? You know that sort of stuff. And and of course the interior. Like how beat up is going is the seat? You know, like because it's a lot of butt time. So, uh, what does Moses think of the baby? Congratulations! Well, thank you. Uh, Moe's, he's fine with the baby. He he keeps wanting to kiss the baby. He wants to lick the baby. We're like, stop it. Don't lick the baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, could you get someone to edit your videos? Potentially, but it, it, again, cost, right? Costs like, money. It costs a lot of money. Editing is very expensive. And now you lose that creative control. So like, it's kind of weird, but like, there's certain things I want in the videos that I know the audience wants in the video. And it'd be very hard to convey that to a third party person, right? Mm -hmm. And so editing would be like the last thing we would hand over. Yeah, I I probably wouldn't I'm I don't see a way that I would really give up editing at this and, point. And even if we did get to the point where we could hire an editor, it would take three or four months of Dan sitting over that person's shoulder to make sure that they put like us screwing up in the video or something like yeah. that, you know, because you don't want to get rid of that because everybody likes watching us screw up. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it, it's it's <laughs> wait like wait until you find out why Dan's car was leaking oil. <laughs> yeah, you, you the thing is like you learn so much by having done it for this long. So I mean, like I've been doing this for over five years. So you learn what makes sense to put in the video, how to edit in the right way, you know. And, I don't know. And actually, I really do enjoy the editing, like, you know, usually. Thank you, John. Oh, but, but, but. You said good job on your 9-11 taillight vlog. Ah, okay. yeah. So, thank you. Yeah, like, I, I haven't edited a single video since I joined, and even Dan's edited the two videos that I did solo. I just give him the footage back, yep. and it's just like, here you go, and he, he edits them. So, because I'm sure I would do it in a completely different style than what he does, so. Yeah, yeah. Um... Have any of you ever had any formal training business? I mean, I've had like management classes and stuff through my old jobs, but um, my education was all in software. So like not for like actually running a business, but I've been a participant in many different businesses. <laughs> so I've never had any management or I mean uh, training in business. I had several leadership courses that I took in the military as I got promoted and stuff like that. But that was like military specific leadership, uh, not military specific, but catered towards that. So no, I, I never really. Zero HP said, uh, if any of you watch these big car YouTube channels for a while, you said they have four to five projects going at once just to keep the content going. Exactly. That's the catch, right? Like they're, especially with like parts being a problem to get and stuff like it's, it's crushing and that and that like in hindsight i made a huge error and it's really impacted the channel negatively um which was buying that 599 like i tied up almost all my free cash like you know i've got a little bit of money that i can use towards projects and I'm, i went big and threw a ton of it at this 599 and then it just nothing happened like we couldn't get parts we couldn't get this we could so it's just been sitting there for forever it's been over a year it's literally been over a year so for over a year i haven't had the resources the financial resources to do any other projects and so the other problem is like like i said way earlier in this in this whole thing the 458's my car like i don't want to modify it like people are like you should wide body i'm like no i hate wide bodies they look stupid you know like things like that so i don't want to mess with that car because it's exactly how I want it to be. So I needed something else to do. And that's, that's literally why I bought the boat because I was like, I I don't have the money to go out and buy another Ferrari or even a Porsche. I couldn't even buy a, like a Boxster at that point, but I could go out and buy a cheap ass boat. <laughs> so, I mean, anyway. So, uh, Richard asked what's in store for the Porsche parts on the website. So we have a bunch of exhausts up there now for pretty much all the 911s going back to 996s. Um, and then for the Cayman, we have 718. Uh, I want to start getting like uh, suspensions up on the site. 
too, because I think that exhaust and suspension is like the biggest thing that people do to their cars. They want to lower it, make it sound a little bit better. Uh, so we are going to start, or I'm going to start uh, doing that. Yeah. Yeah, we want to keep adding more and more Porsche stuff. Um, like at some point, we want to do like a Porsche project car. Um, that would be awesome. Yeah, because like, you know, I mean, they're, they're fun and people like Porsche. So like, there's no reason why we wouldn't do it. Of course, I also want to do a Lamborghini and I don't, you know, because... I think Lamborghinis get a lot of attention and they're fun. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff we want to do. It's just a matter of, again, resource limitations, right? Like we're trying to work within the bounds of what we have. Um, so it's, it's, you know, like, I, and I, like, I, you know, I know like this, it's kind of strange, like telling you guys all this stuff because like, it's not what you want to hear. Like you, you just want to see stuff like, but it's the reality, right? Like, I, I think that's the, the difference is like our, our channel is very much real. Like there's, there's no scripting. There's like, uh, you know, like great example is last week's live doing the wrenching. You <laughs> completely unscripted oil leak, you know, like that. This is just the reality of doing what we do. So that's kind of how we do this is it's just the reality of owning these cars, the reality of this whole experience. So, um, yeah, anyway, so, yeah. Well, we'll wrap it up in just a moment. If you guys have any one, one or two more questions or something like that, well, um, again, don't forget we do this live every Thursday at eight. So we'll try and uh, like we want to bring some guests. Like we'll bring back Josh. Um, if you guys uh, like, actually, I'd like to have uh, James come on here one of these times because James is quite a character, and I think you guys would like him. Um, he has a beautiful Jaguar. Yeah, we should have, I mean, we could have Carrie on here. We could have, like, the Indiana division of NGS. Uh... Indiana <laughs> I could see. Carrie's going to need probably a couple of weeks uh, heads up, though, because I'm sure he'll want to print out, like, some sort of oh, God. No, or so that's the trick. for we the can't, background. We can't give him a heads up. He's just going to be like, all right, you're going live in, like, 30 minutes. <laughs> Will Meg be doing Meg a baby review? <laughs> If she did anything like the car reviews, that would probably actually be pretty funny. Like, does a baby review? She's like, look at, look at, they, they, they cheaped out on the bumpers on this one. And they, thank you. Thank we you. ran, we ran out of DNA right here. <laughs> DNA. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. No, I, 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 I'm trying to like, I'm, I haven't figured out how to do the baby stuff yet because I, I like, I've filmed. Um, some video of the birth, not like the actual like graphic birth, but like just that whole experience. And I haven't edited it yet. Um, and I haven't done any videos like really showing the baby. He actually uh, briefly pops up in one of the five, four or five, eight videos that's going to be coming out in a few days. But um, I, part of it is I don't want to like do that to my kid. Like, I, like he's not a prop. He's my kid. And so um, I don't know. Like I haven't decided how I want to play that card yet. Like, uh, you know. So we'll figure it the, out. The Loper would be a good person to have on a live. Sure, yeah. But he's the problem is he like uh, he's busy. I mean, yeah. So. We'll try to uh, we'll we'll try to get y'all's wish lists of uh, people guests on lives. Yeah. No promises, but we'll try. Any thought on how many miles or time you should change a 911 serpentine belt, especially if it's not showing wear? I think the manual calls for every 30,000 miles. Isn't it, most belts are usually like five-year belts, right? I would assume. Yeah. It's probably five years if it's not mileaged out, if it's timed out. I don't know. Do you think the SF90 being so fast and hybrid part is taking the driving experience away from Ferraris? I mean, I think a lot of the cars now are so fast and powerful that the computers are doing like most of the driving. That's the reason I love the 4 of 8. I think it's the last like analog car, even though the computer does help you, it still kind of lets you get into trouble. Um, Harry and Megan use their kids as props. Yeah, well, <laughs> I need some Rachel. Have her deliver drinks and snacks during a live stream. <laughs> and, and thank you, John, for the $5. Yes, for the diaper fund, yes. Yeah, we didn't miss that. Thank you, John. Yes. <laughs> uh, if, if Rachel is doing desserts, I'm driving to your house for a live stream. Okay. Like, I will be there for that. I just need to have a heads up because you all keep telling me about how great her desserts are. They are. Dude, I, we need to bribe her to make that cookie thing again. Oh, my God. 
is so good. I still don't need that, but anyway. Uh, the 340 is the last real analog car, of course, Tim. Well, I mean, like, technically it still has, like, well, no, I guess it's pretty analog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the 408 has digital screens, but, like, the gauge, the tack is real. Yeah, <laughs> Tim's like, if Rachel's catching, I'm going to be there. No kidding, right? Like, anyway. Oh, I, no. I guess we probably should wrap it up there, but um, thank you. Thank you, everyone, again, for joining us. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, Thursday at 8, set your alarms. I know sometimes I forget to, like, schedule it until the last minute, but I'll try and remember to schedule this one and the next one immediately so that you can put the little thing on it. So as soon as we're done here, I'll schedule it. Um, but, we, you know, we might have to change it. <laughs> Thank you, Mousetrap. Thanks again, Mousetrap, <laughs> as always. We were worried about you. Glad you're you're okay. Glad you're um, alive. Yep. Yeah. So we need live stream, bitches. Oh, that didn't show up because it was, yeah. Anyway, put the deserts in the store? Desserts. Oh, sorry. Desserts in the store. <laughs> sell, sell Rachel's desserts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Markups on that would be huge. <laughs> All right, guys. We will see you next week uh, live. There's a lot of Fork of Eight content coming up. So you guys will be happy about that. Lots of, like, everything coming up for the next two weeks. Literally two weeks is DIY content. So rejoice. We're finally back. Yeah, we we have lots of projects now. And, of course, we started wrenching on the 355. So that's coming up. Um, those videos will be popping up. Actually, tomorrow's video or Saturday's video is the next 355 video. So you'll appreciate that. So we will see you guys next week. And yeah. thanks again. Thanks to everybody who donated. Y'all have a great night. Yes. See ya. Yay.